welcome welcome again to our broadcast for today compliments compliments of the season to you and yours all of you who are here on a regular basis we thank you we we'll bless the name of the Lord for each and every one of you and for those who are just joining us for the first time we're glad you're here this thing gets very addictive I'm telling you, you're going to be so blessed. You're going to want to come back again week after week. Mighty blessings await us on our broadcast for today. You're going to be blessed hearing me talk again about faith like I did on last week. The subject of faith that I'm using today is none other than our father Abraham, our example, example of faith. You know, last week we looked into the New Testament on the subject of faith. So we're going to look into the Old Testament today, even though we will be using a New Testament scripture for our learning. If my sermon of last week helped you, and many of you told me you were helped, we had so many people log on on Facebook and on YouTube and on my podcast. This one will help you even more. And I believe this time of the year when we are remembering the Savior, the reason for the season, we need to ask the Lord to help us to sharpen our faith in God Almighty. Get ready for an eye-opening word from God. But please, stay where you are while I make my usual announcement, beginning with my podcast. That's Bishop Etiola's podcast. You can access that podcast by downloading my podcast app on the Google Play Store or for those of you who use the iPhone, you can download the Spreaker app, and that works for both Apple and Google. Spreaker is spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E You'll be joining listeners from over 50 countries around the world who crossed the 85,000 downloads just this week. And I thank God that you are one of those that made that possible. Help us share the links to your friends. Someone called from Antigua and said, I listened to you, Bishop, on your podcast, and I'm blessed by what I hear. You're going to be blessed too if you will just download the app. It's all free and listen to it. We don't allow any adverts on our podcast, so you begin listening from the beginning to the end without any interruption whatsoever. But we're also on TV, yes. But I'd like to thank RBS TV 13 in Guyana that have allowed us to be on their station every Saturday from 5 p.m to 6 p.m. local time. Compliments of the season to the owner or the owners and the employees of that great station. But there's another great station in Jamaica this time. That's Mercy and Truth TV. Every Saturday we are on from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. local time. And every Wednesday, we are on at 1.30 a.m. local time. Compliments of the season to the owners of RBS TV 13 in Guyana and Mercy and Truth TV right here in Jamaica. Did you hear me talking about right here in Jamaica? My mind is with you. My heart is with you. And I know one of these days will come knocking on your door. Compliments of the season also. To those who own and work on Logic One TV, Channel 112, they work on it, they work in it, and they put us on three times a week and several times of the week. 
with our prayers. Compliments of the season to the owners and also to the employees of that great station. I pray that the reason for Christ coming to give us peace, love, and joy will be manifest in your lives. Please don't forget also to listen to us on our own radio station, Fresh Waves Radio. It's on the air 24-7. We have a lot of programming that will be a blessing to your soul and to your spirit, and believe it or not, to your body also. I want to say thank you to the employees, the young ladies and the young boys and the young men. I'm not sure they want me to call them boys. But well, boys are always boys, and we thank you for keeping that station on the air. May God bless you. We ask you to please tune us in 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week. You can download the app for both the Android and the Apple phones from their respective app stores. You just need to type in Fresh Waves Radio, install the app, and my friends, you are good to go. Don't forget to join me this Thursday. Don't forget to join me this Friday. On my personal YouTube page, uh, on my personal uh, Facebook page. Maybe God is telling me to go open a YouTube page, but I would rather let the one for fresh anointing be sufficient for the YouTube page. But I'm on live every Thursday and every Friday at 7 p.m. New York time where we pray heaven down and God blesses his people. Come and get a taste of it. You'll be glad you did. Those are my announcements. And here is our announcement to God that we need his help. Heavenly Father, anoint me to speak today. Anoint your people to hear. Bless us all together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. The title of my message today is Fully Persuaded. Fully Persuaded. You know, faith, another name for faith is fully persuaded. When a man or a woman is fully persuaded about what they are praying on, that God will answer, that is faith in manifestation. And I said earlier, we're going to look at the life of Abraham. So we're going to read something about him that is recorded in Romans chapter 4, beginning to read in verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they are who against hope, talking about Abraham, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. For being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. If you have been watching this broadcast, for some time, you'll agree with me that what I try to do when I preach or teach is to keep things as simple as possible. The reason is very simple. I desire to pass across the gospel message in such a way that I don't talk above anybody's head. But I keep the word simple and understandable that even a little child can understand the truth that I'm trying to pass across. 
Last week, our topic was on faith. And I'm keeping to that topic again today. The natural question some might ask me is, why spend two whole broadcasts on faith? Well, the answer is simple. If you read scriptures like the one that says without faith it is impossible to please God, then you know you need to hear more about faith. Or if you have scriptures like the one that says that which is not of faith is sin, or the one that says all things are possible to him that believeth. So you see, scriptures like that put a necessity on the pulpit ministry to help those on the pews to grasp the importance of faith. So grant me the indulgence for another time today to talk about faith in God. And what I want to do is give you another name and another definition of what faith is. If you can just grasp this other name for faith, it will help you know whether you are believing God in any situation or you are just going through the motions. The other name for faith is actually embedded in the beautiful story of Abraham's faith that I just read. Now, Abraham was given a promise by God that in his old age, he will have a son. Unfortunately, he applied human wisdom and had the baby by his house help instead of his wife, as God promised. Now, after he saw the effect of what he did, Abraham made up his mind to trust God henceforth no matter what. The seven steps he took in trusting God for the birth of Isaac are the points that are detailed in the text I just read a few minutes ago. Number one, against hope. Abraham believed in hope. Number two, he moved from his weak faith that made him mess up at first to a stronger faith that made him believe God no matter what. Number three, in doing so now, he refused to consider the deadness of his own body and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He held on to the promise of God, number four, to give him a child, refusing to stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. Number five, to prove that, he started giving God the glory, giving God the praise for his promise to him, even though the child was yet unborn. Number six, he was fully persuaded that God was able and reliable. And guess what happened? He got his baby. He got his baby. By taking these steps I just mentioned. You know what? If you can write down those six or seven steps somewhere and sincerely follow them, it will solve many problems that are facing you right now and give you the Isaac that you are looking for. Let me go that over them again. Number one, when it looks hopeless, don't give up hope. Number two, upgrade yourself from weak faith to strong faith. Number three, refuse to consider what you see and what you know, especially 
common sense facts that point to the impossibility of what you want from God. Number four, hold on to the promises of God, not allowing unbelief or double-mindedness to get a hold of you. Number five, begin to give God the glory for the breakthrough as if you already have it. And number six, be fully persuaded, fully persuaded, that God is able and that God is reliable. You'll get your baby. I guarantee it. If you take those steps, that baby can be anything. It could be a physical baby. It could be a spiritual baby. It could be a material baby. It could be a married old baby, educational or whatsoever. That baby will be born. That desire will be granted. Now I can talk one by one among those seven steps and it will take me seven weeks. So what I have done is to pick one of them because I find in it a beautiful name and a beautiful definition of what faith is. If you have ever wondered whether you are walking in faith or not, if you have ever wondered whether a prayer has been prayed in faith or not, if you have ever wanted to be sure if you are really and truly believing God for that thing or not, here is the test to pass. Once you pass this test, once you meet this qualification, then you are walking in faith and you are on your way to getting your prayers answered. The other name for faith that I'm talking about consists of two words. And those two words are found in verse 21 of the verses that I read. Look at Romans chapter 4. I'm reading there in verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. He, Abraham, the Bible says, was fully persuaded. If you can get to that point, people... There is nothing you are believing God for that God will deny you. Notice that Abraham was not just persuaded. Uh -uh. Abraham was fully persuaded. It's the what I call so persuaded that I know that I know that I know I'm walking in faith. Nothing wavering. It is the nothing can make me doubt it. Of faith. Another name for faith. Very simple. Is fully persuaded. You now there is a difference between knowing God can do it. And knowing that God will do it. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. There is a difference between knowing God can do it and knowing that God will do it. It was God can do it faith that brought about his first son, Ishmael. But it was God will do it that brought about his promised son, Isaac. Being fully persuaded is when you are certain that God not only could do it, but that God would do it. Can I repeat that? Being fully persuaded 
is when you are certain that God not only could, but that God would. Fully persuaded, ladies and gentlemen, moves you from God can to God will. The question you need to ask yourself, when you are believing God for anything, is simply this. Do I merely believe that God can do this? Or do I believe that God will do this? Believing that God will is the faith that opens heaven and brings answers down. To get to that place is full persuasion. The Bible says he was fully persuaded. You couldn't talk him out of it. You couldn't make him to believe otherwise. And you know, in being fully persuaded, Abraham had to deal with what he saw. He had to deal with what he felt and how he felt. In fact, he had to deal with the science of his day. He also, I'm sure, had to deal with what examples of others said. You know, people don't talk, but you look at their examples, and the examples are talking to you. And he had to deal with other negative things that he could have considered. Because he was a human being. He gathered all of them together and threw them all out. Why? Because of what God had said to him. You see, after God speaks, after you read the word of God, after you get a prophecy, other things will speak, contradicting what God had spoken unto you. But when you are fully persuaded, what to do is you toss out those things and it will be done. You know, there was a woman who came to Jesus and got a miracle. Anytime I read her story, I just shake my head and I say, wow, this is full persuasion. You got to get to that point, people. The reason you don't have your miracle yet is not because some witch or some wizard is blocking you. No, no, no. It's not the obey man. No, no, no. It's not the root walker. It's not the medicine man that is blocking you. It is your lack of faith that is blocking you because your, your faith will bulldoze all those personalities out of your way and get you to the place of your blessing. So this woman had many, many blockages and barriers in her path. But her faith in God, her full persuasion in Jesus, did it for her. And she got what she wanted, in spite of faith-destroying situations. Let me take you to the story. In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, reading there in verse number 21, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, for my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Come on, send her away, for she's making too much noise. She crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not made to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 
Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Listen, people. It takes a fully persuaded type of faith to get a kind of breakthrough that this lady got. Her birth was against her. The initial silence of Jesus was against her. The disciples were against her. The utterances of Jesus testing her faith were against her. But one thing was for her. She had a fully persuaded type of faith. She was convinced to the point that Jesus even admitted that her faith was a great faith. And that leads me to say this. The greatness of faith is measured by the obstacles it overcomes. Yes. Yeah. The greatness of faith is measured by the obstacles that it overcomes. So when you go back to Abraham being fully persuaded that what he had promised him, he was able to perform. I guess he was not fully persuaded when he went into the uh, house help's room but now you say, you know what? I believe God 100%. That verse tells how he got to that place. Because I'm sure you would like to know. How do I get to the place of being fully persuaded and getting answers from God? I'll tell you. It was because of how he saw the power of God and it was because of how he saw the promises of God. Did you hear what I said? It was because of how he saw the power of God. And it was because of how he responded to the promise of God. He believed, and I repeat myself, that God was able and God was reliable. He believed that God could. And God would, and that did it for him. And Isaac was born. You know, many, many, many years ago, I pastored a church in Montgomery, Alabama. Many, many years. I had a very godly woman as my church treasurer. She came to me one Sunday after church. I said, my pastor, I will be coming over to your house during the week to see you and your wife. I have something very important to share with you. So, as promised, she came during the week, but what she shared was not what we were expecting at all. She sat down in the living room and said, for some time now, I've been dealing with a lump in my breast. And I wanted both of you to know what is going on. Now, I don't, I'm not here so you can tell me to go to a doctor. I'm not here so you can direct me to a hospital. I have made up my mind I'm not going that route. I'm going the route of believing God to heal me because by his stripes we were healed. I just wanted to come to let you know so you can be praying for me. She said she had decided that if God cannot do it, it cannot be done. She said it's not that she's opposed to doctors but as she just wants to take God at his word. What else can you say <laughs> after a woman of faith talks to you like that? We couldn't talk her out of her stance. 
So we prayed for her. And she left. We'll see each other in church Sunday after Sunday for several months. Then after a couple of months, she came to us again and said, I have an update for you. I'll be in your house again. She came. And she said what she did every day since she left our house was read healing scriptures to the lump and command it to disappear. She said, I did that faithfully every day for a long, long time without even feeling whether the lump was still there or not. Wow. She said, then one day after taking a shower, she decided, let me feel myself to see if the lump is still there. And lo and behold, the lump had disappeared. She told us, I don't even know when it left, but I came looking for it and it was no longer there. It had melted away under the therapy and fire of the word of the living God. From a believing woman. She told me, he said, Bishop, Pastor, I read 29 scriptures. I collected 29 scriptures from the Bible and I read the scriptures faithfully to the lump and commanded the word. He sends his word and he heals them. So I, you know what I did? I said, please, when you come to church on Sunday, bring me the 29 scriptures. And I, don't, I can't tell you how many people I've given those scriptures to. Anyone who was believing God for healing, I gave it to them. Yes, the word of God truly works. Just like Abraham, my treasurer was fully persuaded that God was faithful. And he showed her his loving kindness. And he showed her his omnipotence. If you don't believe in the faithfulness of God. And if you are not fully persuaded that God can do it. Don't try this at home. Don't do what this woman did if you don't believe God. Because it's not going to work for you. Don't copy people because you want to be like them. Make sure you know and you know and you know inside of you that nobody can make you doubt the faithfulness of God. And it will work for you. You know, as a man of God that I once said about Abraham, let me quote what he said. He said, the confidence of Abraham was built on the omnipotence of God that he was able. And then the man further wrote, he said, our waverings rise mainly from our distrust of the divine power. Wow. Can I repeat that? He wrote, he said, our waverings rise mainly from our distrust of the divine power. You know what we do? <laughs> we suspect God. When God speaks and say, this is what I've said, this is what I'll do, we become suspicious. And we say, really? Are you sure? So the man wrote, our waverings rise mainly from our distrust of the divine power of God. And therefore, to fix us and for us to believe for him to fix us becomes a problem. We look at him as if he's not faithful. We look at him as if he's not able to do that which he has promised. And faith falls flat and miracles do not show up for us. Can I tell you something about myself personally? <laughs> personally, I don't deceive myself. That's the truth. When it comes to trusting God, I do not deceive myself. The question I always ask myself is this. Child, are you fully convinced that God will do it? 
Or you just think that he can do it? I ask myself that question. This thing I'm praying about, this thing I'm believing God for, am I fully convinced, fully persuaded that God will do it? Or that God can just do it? Those are two different things, people. Anyone can believe that God can do it. But it takes a man and a woman who is fully persuaded in faith to believe that he will do it. Allow me to ask you today, what is it that you are believing God for right now? It could be spiritual, it could be material, it could be matrimonial, it could be financial, it could be educational, whatever it is. What is it that you are believing God for right now? I want to appeal to you based on what I've said so far. Don't just believe that God can do it. Rather, believe that God will do it. That's what it means, folks, to be fully persuaded. But well, the question is very simple now. We've got to go to another question. How do I know that I am at the point of full persuasion? Because I ask myself that all the time. Okay, I prayed. Am I really persuaded? Okay, I want to pray. Am I at the point of full persuasion that God will answer? Well, we've got to address that question before we go today. How do I know that I am at that point of being fully, completely, perfectly persuaded. You like to know? I'm glad you like to know. How do I know and know and know and be sure that I am fully persuaded, fully convinced that God will do something for me? It is very simple. Very simple. You ready? Let me tell you some things. If you are fully persuaded in faith that God will do something for you, you will not worry about that thing anymore after you pray. Ha ha! Did you get that? You will not worry about that thing anymore after you pray. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. then you will not fight over it anymore because now you've given the battle to the Lord. You will not fight over it anymore. You know what else? You will not cry over it anymore. You will not cry about it anymore. You've shed the last tear when you prayed about it in faith. I'm not crying about it anymore. You will not have sleepless nights about it anymore. That's the one that is fully persuaded that is done. The way you think about it will be positive, not negative anymore. The way you talk about it will be positive, not negative anymore. And then the things you do about it will be positive, not negative. And by the way, you will begin to act as if you already have the answer. Grant me the indulgence of going over those eight points again. How do I know? How do I know that I am fully persuaded? Eight things that will help you to know whether you are fully persuaded or not. You will not worry about it anymore. You will not fight over it anymore. You will not cry over it anymore. You will not have sleepless nights over it anymore. The way you think about it will now be positive. The way you talk about it will now be positive. And the things you do about it will be positive. You will begin to 
act as if you already have the answer. Let me tell you two stories that will perfectly illustrate this point. You know, a couple of years ago, we held a conference for the women in our church at a retreat center not far from here in New Jersey. Sometime during the conference, we prayed for women that were waiting on God for the fruit of the womb. And one of the ladies that attended the conference was believing God for a child. You know what she did? <laughs> She brought to that conference baby clothes for girls because she was believing God for a girl. And she said, when those who are believing God for children are prayed for, she will raise those things she brought. She brought clothes, she brought feeding bottles, she brought blanket. And she said, once I'm prayed for, I'm coming back next year. And these are the clothes I'm going to wear for my baby. Well, we prayed, and she went back home. Lo and behold, <laughs> she got pregnant and gave birth. Yeah, you guess, right, to a baby girl. And she brought the baby girl to the conference the following year, dressed in what she brought to the place last year. Wow. When you are fully persuaded, it will show in your actions. I repeat, when you are fully persuaded, it will show in your actions. I got another story that I want to share with you. And it has to do with a man of faith who accidentally broke his leg. He, he was a preacher and he taught faith. But his leg got broken somehow. And he said, okay, let people come and pray for me. So they prayed for him and he said, I believe God. God is going to walk on this leg, on this leg that is broken. When they said, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And the prayer finished, he got up and walked. But as he tried to walk, the pain was so bad. He fell down in excruciating pain and he almost passed out. He tried several times, but he ended up giving up because of pain. So he asked God, he said, Father, why did you not heal me? And God said to him, because you are not fully persuaded about my healing power. And he told the Lord that, wait a minute, Lord. I thought I was fully persuaded that that is why I got up and walked. If I wasn't persuaded that I was healed, I would still be sitting down or laying down on the floor. But to his surprise, God told him that he was not fully persuaded. And then God told him something that really opened his eyes. And I think it will be an eye-opener to you, an eye-opener to me also, because when I heard the story, true story, God said to this man of God, that if truly he believed the prayers had worked for him, why was he afraid to step out first on the leg that was broken? Why? God told him that fear and faith never go together. That the reason that you first stepped out on the uninjured foot was because you were not fully persuaded that the injured foot was healed. If you were, you would have stepped on it and walked on it. 
Then the man said, Aha! Now I get it. Come pray for me one more time, people. He was prayed for. And guess what happened? He stepped out first using the injured foot, fully persuaded now that he was healed. And he has been working ever since. Glory to God. Full persuasion. People, they work wonders. And they will work wonders in your life also. Full persuasion. And if you have heard me tell the story of how when I was in Africa, I had malaria fever. You all know malaria from mosquitoes. And I prayed 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 and I prayed. The more I prayed, the sicker I got. You know what I was missing? Full persuasion. Then God spoke to me through a book that I just picked up randomly and read. And I read in that book that if you still worry after you pray about something, then you are not fully persuaded that God has answered your prayers. The moment I read that statement, in other words, if you believe God, you don't worry about what you pray on. The malaria left me completely healed instantaneously. People, you and I need full persuasion. He that comes to God must believe that he is fully persuaded. He is. Whatever you are believing God for, he is. If it is healing, he is. If it is money, he is. If it is promotion, he is. And he is a God that rewards those that diligently seek him. Finish. Full persuasion. It works wonders. And I'll never forget one time when we were in Montgomery, Alabama years ago. We were, we were so poor. Poor people called us poor. And one day we had no food in the house. Absolutely no food. And um, I just told my wife, I said, I, I'm leaving to go out. Uh, by the time I come back, we will have food. I didn't, I didn't know that. I just said it, fully persuaded that God is a faithful God. And I told my wife, give me a list of what you will need. And she did. She never questioned me why, but I'm sure in her mind she was wondering, he has no money, where is he going to get money to buy this? So I left. And then I saw a friend who asked me point blank. He said, do you have any food in the house? I said, to be honest with you, we don't. He said, okay, I'm going to write you a check. Go to the bank, ask for so-and-so. They will cash the check for you. Go and use it for whatever you need. I came back home that day <laughs> with food, loaded with food. And then I told my wife how we are God blessed to be able to buy that. God never fails you. If you are fully persuaded. I can tell you stories. Of what happened to me in Montgomery, Alabama. One time. Our daughter. There was no more diapers. It was the last diaper we put on her. And we just prayed. We said God we are fully persuaded. That you know this need. And you will meet this need. So we left. When we came back home. There was a big box. On our front door. And we wondered what it was. So we opened the door, carried the box in, opened it up. Guess what was inside it? Diapers. It was Sister Williams. If she's watching this program, she's hearing me, she knows it's the truth. We called her and said, Sister Williams, you brought the diapers? She said, yes. She said, I went to the grocery and as I was passing the aisle where they sell where they put diapers, I heard a voice that said, buy some diapers and take them to this preacher's house. And that was how she came. That was how God answered. 
and tell you stories that will lift your faith. Be fully persuaded. Because full persuasion, the work wonders. And I think a classic example is what we find in uh, Philemon chapter 1 verse 22. Paul the apostle wrote, but without prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given to you. Now that is full persuasion right there. Let me read it again. Prepare for me a lodging. For I trust that through prayers I shall be given to you. Wow. Full persuasion. It always acts. Paul was still in prison. And he was believing God for his release. What he said in that verse showed clearly that he was fully persuaded of getting a positive answer from God. Look at that statement again. For I trust that through your prayers I shall be given to you. So just go ahead. With me still being in the prison, go ahead and prepare me a lodging. But Paul, you are not out of prison yet. How come you are asking for a lodging to be prepared for you when you are still in prison? The answer is very simple. Paul will have replied them, I have prayed for my release. I am fully persuaded that God can do it and God will do it. That is why I'm acting on my faith and asking for the place where I will stay after my release to be prepared. And I can imagine the people say, wow, this Paul is a man of faith. And you know what? As history tells us, Paul indeed was released from that prison. Paul indeed lodged in the lodging that he requested to be prepared for him. Well, Abraham has died and gone. Paul has died and gone. The Canaanite woman has died and gone. Many are the examples of people in the Bible and in our days, men and women who believed God and they were fully persuaded that God will come through for them and he did. It's now your turn. It's now my turn. The God who did not fail them will not fail you. The God who did not fail them will not fail me. Don't forget now, if you are fully persuaded, you will not worry about it after you are prayed. You will not fight over it anymore. You will not cry over it anymore. You will not have sleepless nights about it anymore. The way you think about it will be positive. The way you talk about it will be positive. And the things you do about it will be positive. In fact, you will begin to act as if you already have the answer. You know what my prayer for you is as I go off the air today? My prayer for you is very simple. Is that God will ignite faith in you to believe God for whatever needs are present in your life. God is able. We all agree to that. God can do it. We all agree with that. But we all need to take a step and agree that God will do it. That's who Abraham was. That's who God wants you to be. And that's who God wants me to be. I'm going to go off the air. And I want you to go and start acting on what you have heard. Not been here as alone, but do us also. Exercise your faith. Put it to work. And see how God will come through for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you for today. Thank you for Abraham, the example he left. Thank you for the Canaanite woman who was not even a Christian for the example she left and many others that we read in the Bible. 
Father, I pray that you will help us. We cannot say we don't believe, but we're like that man. Help our unbelief, O oh God. Where we doubt and where we manifest double-mindedness, where we suspect you, we pray you forgive us and change our faith and increase us in faith. I pray that we'll be fully persuaded about anything we pray on, knowing that you are a faithful God. I thank you because wonders will happen in our lives once you give us the grace to do these things. We we'll bless you because you have heard us. We we'll bless you because you have answered us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back again next week, God willing. Until then, please exercise your faith. Bye-bye.